Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Marketing Podcast, your source for all things marketing. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, moneymatterstoptips.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today is a very special Reunion 2020 episode. What is that? That's when I had on a guest in the past, and I liked them so much I had to bring them right on back. Uh, today's <laughs> guest is Melissa Harris, and she's CEO over at M. Harrison Co. Uh, Melissa, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much. So uh, excited to get into today's topic. I want to get into some uh, the new vertical you're pursuing and why you're pursuing it. Um, we're going to leave the audience in a little cliffhanger there. So let's just start off with just giving a little bit more about what you're doing over at M. Harrison Co. Yeah, so we are a marketing and communications agency, but we like to tell people that we're in the liposuction business. <laughs> and uh, that's, because, <laughs> that's because we believe that companies that tell kind of clear, compelling and most importantly, brief stories about themselves stand out and they win more business. And um, we, you know, we're an agency, mostly a former kind of veteran and very, very senior journalist. So we really work on crafting uh, sharp, pointy, and compelling stories for our, for our clients. That's awesome. And uh, speaking of, I do want to get into this new vertical you launched. So tell us more. So brand new food vertical that you've been focusing on. So tell us more. Yes. So I have brought on uh, Kevin Pang to lead our food vertical, and Kevin is a Game Beard Award winner and the former editor-in-chief and founding editor of The Takeout, which is the Onion non-satirical food site, which he built to up to 6 million unique uh, visitors a month. Um, Kevin and I met when we were both columnists at the Chicago Tribune. I was a business columnist. He was a food critic. And then he went on to also produce and write and direct an amazing documentary about food called Four Great. And so if you have Netflix, please, everyone, go on and watch uh, Four Great, uh, which is a 90-minute feature-length documentary about a chef named Curtis Duffy. So we are, Kevin and I together are building um, a focus on food clients. We launched the vertical in uh, the fall, and we already have about eight to nine, eight or nine clients in, in that sector already. Wow, that's absolutely amazing. Um, and so what, just so that uh, the people listening have, have a better feel, so what kind of things are you going to be helping uh, these clients with in this new vertical? Yeah. So on fr this past Friday, we just launched uh, the Chicago Board Game Cafe, which is Cards mm -hmm. Against Humanity's first and new restaurant. And it's this amazing experience. It has 500 board games in its vault. It has a it has wow. a mead hall for Dungeons and Dragons play. It has a retail store. It has two escape rooms from the House Theater of Chicago in the basement. And it has a kick butt, I was going to say another word, a kick butt <laughs> menu from executive chef Aaron McKay, uh, formerly of uh, Milne and Schwa, uh, you know, both of which uh, at one point had Michelin star seats. So this is a fabulous new restaurant that we launched with coverage um, in every media outlet in Chicago and tons of national coverage uh, from Polygon and Eater to um, Food and Wine, even, uh, magazine. So that opened on Friday, and we are guns a-blazing on, on that project. All the way to this amazing company called Sustainable Bioproducts. Sustainable Bioproducts has essentially discovered a brand-new food source in the hot springs of Yellowstone National Park, if you can believe mm. it. It's I know. I was just going to say, you, you got me. I'm like, wait a minute. They it discovered started, a brand. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's <started laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> it started as a research project for NASA. And um, believe it, again, believe it or not. This is getting, yeah, this is going further and further. I wasn't right, exactly. Well, would you even believe that Bill Gates is an investor? Um, believe it or not, <laughs> yes. Um, so so um, this company has some exciting news coming in April um, regarding, um, you know, production, going to market, launching this, uh, their products onto grocery store shelves. And, again, we are assisting in every step of the way in getting that product, uh, getting that brand product and news out there. So those are just a few examples. We, we also work with um, – 
One more I'll mention um, is a company called Open Water. And what they do is, I don't know if you know this, but people, even though you throw your plastic water bottles into a recycling can, mm -hmm. unfortunately, a great percentage of them actually don't get recycled. Mm, um, and in, yeah, instead, um, so what they do is they do bottled water, but in a can, in an aluminum can. And that's mm. because aluminum gets recycled at a much, much higher rate than plastic. And that's because there's a secondary market for melted aluminum. They, aluminum is bought and sold. So, you know, it's really, um, so for that reason, uh, people actually recycle aluminum because they can make money off of the recycled product. And uh, they make a, a water, a, you know, it, they, they produce bottled sparkling and regular water in a can. And they're, wow, they're that's famous. amazing. No, it makes perfect <laughs> sense because, yeah, no, because the, the secondary market, like people aren't going to let that go to waste and it's in this exactly. level. Exactly, they can make a, money on yeah. it, so they're going to recycle For sure. it. Right. <laughs> oh, wow, that's um, great. No, I love it. I love the thought so process. I love the companies out, like, that you're going behind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, drinkopenwater.com. It's a great place to to find. So you can you can find them there. That's awesome. So um, for the for the audience and the people listening, I mean, just to give them a, a kind of a feel for, because um, some people are listening to your hit background right now and they're wondering if they're a good fit for M. Harris and Co. or not. What are the type of clients you like working with? We like uh, working with clients that are growth oriented, that are launching something new, that are taking a, a new idea to market. Um, but uh, we are sector agnostic. We work with clients in healthcare, uh, in manufacturing, in technology. So uh, it really, though, is companies that are looking to stand out and acquire new customers. What do you find? I mean, you've been in the business for a long time, had different um, vantage points. Um, yeah. What do you find interesting going on in marketing right now? Any themes that you're kind of uh, you kind of have your eye on that uh, that you care to comment on? Yeah, so there's a couple of things. Uh, first is that you know it's not good enough anymore to convey information or facts. It's mm. just not compelling anymore. Your your message and your brand has to have emotional heft. It has to have emotional weight. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that when it comes to public relations and communication, you know, we, we often get approached by companies who, you know, we're all former journalists. I was a journalist for 15 years, where the reality is that your path to news coverage is just not going to be easy. You don't have all the ingredients that journalists are looking for when um, they look for a good story. So you, in that case, we have to advise our clients to say, hey, what you just have on its face is not newsworthy. You need to focus instead on what the, the, what the product stands for. You have to make your brand newsworthy by doing other things that kind of, that kind of um, represent the ethos and the brand and the values of your business that like, that like project the values of your business that are newsworthy. And it doesn't require actually a lot of money to do that, but it does require a lot of courage because it requires you to stand for something. And, um, and, and, and that for many reasons, especially publicly traded companies, that's hard to do. So mm -hmm. those are kind of uh, the messages that we find ourselves kind of repeating over and over again these days. And then there's the whole part of marketing that's very data and data oriented and, and it's only going to be increasingly so. But that's less sexy. Who wants to talk about numbers? <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, Melissa. So if uh, so, if somebody's listening to this and they do want more information on M. Harris and Co., what's the best way for them to reach out? So Melissa at mharris.com. Uh, my first name, M-E-L-I-S-S-A at mharris.com. Fantastic. Well, hey, Melissa, really appreciate you coming back on the show for this reunion 2020 episode. I'm going to have to bring you back in 2021, catch up with you then, see what's going on. I'm excited to hear more about this uh, new food vertical that you've launched, all the great work you're doing for these new clients you've already brought on, the new restaurant. I mean, you got a lot going on already to start out your 2020. I love it. Um, and so that's awesome. Yes. Uh, and to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. Hope you had a lot of fun listening because we had fun making it for you. If you did, don't forget, subscribe to the podcast. Uh, if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters uh, Marketing, then um, give that a subscribe, but also leave us some comments in the comment section. Love to hear what, what's going on interesting in your world um, of marketing. And Melissa, thanks again for coming on the show.